Hello, thank you for watching this presentation. My name is Ainoa Baide Cabres and I work at Dairy Experts in Tulare, California. The title of this presentation is Effects of Native Roman Microbe Supplementation in Feed on Milk Yield Composition and Feed Efficiency in Lactating Dairy Cups. The main findings of this study were that cows fed native rumen microbes produced four kilograms per day more energy corrected milk, more fat and protein, and had a greater feed efficiency compared to control cows. As an introduction, a little bit of background about how the rumen endomicrobial based products evaluated in this study were developed. Native Microbials, the company that manufactures them, carried out a large survey of microbial community profiles from cows in different states and built a network of microbes and host states related to health and production. These networks allow to interpret the relationships between microbes and how those relationships shift by microbial community efficacy. Highly connected groups were clustered by their ability to perform a certain metabolism, and finally, this information was used to identify the most important stains in the rumen related to certain metabolism. The next step was to isolate those microbes and grow them. You can see some of those microbes in this slide. Based on this knowledge, native microbials developed a product named Galaxis, stable for at least 24 hours in a total mixed ration. This product increases the abundance of two microbes. One is a fungi and the other is a bacterium that are highly catabolic and perform vital chemistry in the rumen. Galaxies Frontier is the next generation product comprised of the same two microbes and galaxies and two additional ones that are hemicellulose and starch degraders as well as butyrate and acetate producers. The objective of this study was to evaluate multiple cows' response to two native rumen microbial feed supplements, Galaxies and Galaxies Frontier, on milk production, milk composition, and feed efficiency. Study design. We enrolled 90 multiple Holstein cows of second or third parity, sourced from a single large commercial dairy between 20 and 40 days in milk with the purpose of minimizing the variability between the cows that were enrolled in the study. We brought them into the Dairy Experts Research Facility and housed them in a single group, as you can see in the picture. Once in the facilities, we allowed them for 21 days of adaptation. Diet was prepared daily on a single batch, and the TMR was representative of California dairy diets. Treatments, we had 30 cows per group, which were randomly assigned to one of the three treatments after being balanced by meal yield during the adaptation period. Our treatments were galaxies providing two endomicrobials, galaxies frontier providing four endomicrobials, and negative control not providing any microbial added. That single batch of TMR was divided into three piles, which were then separately loaded into the mixer wagon where treatments were added at 0.33 grams per kilogram of TMR. In the mixer wagon, treatments were mixed with the TMR and then transferred to their respective mangers to which any cow assigned to that specific treatment would have access. We fed cows at Libitum those treatments for 271 days, starting at 40 to 60 days in milk after that adaptation period that I mentioned. Outcomes evaluated included individual milk yield and composition, which was measured at each milking, AM and PM milkings, in the milking parlor of the research facility, which is equipped with milk meters and an optical inline milk component analyzer. Individual cow daily feed intake was recorded in the system that I mentioned before which in addition to allow for multiple diets for cows housed in the same pen and for access of cows to multiple mangers within treatments, the system measures the amount of feed eaten, time spent eating, and visits per cow. With that information, we calculated energy corrected milk, fat corrected milk, and feed efficiency, which are also outcomes of this study. Statistical analysis were conducted with SAS, by multiple linear regression using the mixed procedure. 
Daily productive data was summarized and analyzed as weekly averages, and feed efficiency data was analyzed as daily values. The models included the fixed effects of baseline, treatment, and time, which was week or a study day, and treatment by time, as well as the repeated statement with cow as the subject. These the square mean comparisons were bump running adjusted, and the figures that you're going to see in the results section represent the least square mean of the above described models. Meal yield. We observed effects of treatment week and treatment by week for meal yield. Overall, Galaxy's Frontier cows produce three kilograms per day more milk than control cows and tend to produce 2.8 kilograms more milk than Galaxy's cows. However, no statistically significant difference was observed between milk yield on galaxies and control cows. The treatment by week interaction that we observed was mainly driven by differences between treatments being observed weeks after supplementation was initiated. Energy corrected meal yield. We observed effects of baseline treatment week and treatment by week on energy corrected meal yield. Overall, Galaxy's Frontier cows produce four kilograms per day more than control cows and tend to produce three kilograms per day more than Galaxy's cows. However, no statistically significant effects were observed between galaxies and control cows. Similarly to milk yield, the treatment by week interaction was driven by differences between treatments being mainly evident weeks after supplementation was initiated. Fat corrected milk. We observed effects of treatment week and treatment by week for fat corrected milk. Overall, Galaxy's Frontier cows produce four kilograms per day more fat corrected milk than control cows and tend to produce three kilograms per day more fat corrected milk than Galaxy's cows. However, no statistically significant difference was observed between control and Galaxy's cows. Similarly to the effects observed for milk yield and energy corrected milk yield, the treatment by week interaction was mainly driven by treatment differences being evident weeks after supplementation was initiated. Fat yield. We observed effects of treatment and week for fat yield. Overall, Galaxy's Frontier's cows produce over 0.1 kilograms per day more fat than control cows. However, no statistically significant differences were observed on fat yield between Galaxy's Frontier and Galaxy's or between Galaxy's and control cows. Protein yield. We observed effects of treatment and weight for protein yield. Overall, Galaxy's Frontier cows produce over 0.1 kilograms per day more protein than control cows and tend to produce 0.1 kilograms per day more protein than Galaxy's cows. However, no statistically significant difference was observed on protein yield between Galaxy's and control cows, and no treatment by time effect was observed for this outcome. Feed efficiency. We observed effects of treatment, study day, and treatment by a study day on feed efficiency. Galaxy's Frontier cows had a higher feed efficiency compared to Galaxy's and control cows. And similarly to what we observed previously for the productive outcomes, the treatment by time interaction was driven by differences between treatments being more evident weeks after supplementation was initiated. In conclusion, supplementation of Galaxy's Frontier native rumen microbes improved economically important outcomes such as energy corrected milk by four kilograms per day, fat corrected milk, milk yield, fat yield, protein yield, and feed efficiency. Thank you for your attention and I will be happy to answer any question you might have.